Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to do Kuroko no Basket 2, episode 13 review. That is 1 3. Now, the episode came out three days ago, so I can't say this week's episode, but nonetheless, it is still the latest episode of Kuroko no Basket. Now, the thing here is that I'm now getting out of my, I believe so, I'm getting out of my slump phase when it comes to my flu. I'm feeling a lot better, I'm feeling worlds better. I can breathe, sort of, kind of. I still have mucus, so I still need to blow my nose occasionally. But I'm feeling a lot better. My throat's feeling, my throat's feeling a lot better. Oh, man. Woo! My throat's feeling world better. Vitamin C does you justice over, you know, a few days. But nonetheless, I'm not at 1%. But I'm, again, if you're wondering, I am doing better. Now, the thing here is that this episode... Is actually very simple so this review is gonna be quick and it is truth be told because all it really is like the two main things are the build-up for the winter cup and the meeting of the generation miracle members plus Kagami and Furihara oh and of course the actual start of the game between Saren and Toll I don't know if that match between Toll and Saren I don't know if that's like the first game or the first match of the Winter Cup, but it's Saren's first match. So I think that the way it works, I'm not too sure about this, but I think that maybe like other teams are playing as as Saren and Toa are playing. Is it that Toa are like looked at the most because Toa they're like number two in the inner high. So because I believe it was Rakuzan, Toa, and Yose. So Yose. So. Of course, Toho's getting like a lot of like hype here because you know Toho, Aomi, and Daiki spanked the shit, spanked the shit out of Team Saren last season in her high. So, right here is Team Saren's revenge match, and they've been training. We have, I think his name is Tora, the father of Rico. He's been honing the regular players of Team Saren. He's been only he's he, he's been training the entire team. The freshmen, they're not gonna learn some new skills, but when it comes to Hyuga and Izuki, they found their answer for new skills. And of course, we already know, we already know that Kiyoshi, right post Bowman, he's already set in stone. The other guys, um, Rin Nosuke and the other two guys, I forgot their name completely, they're, they'll make do, pretty much. And he can't really train Kuroko, because Kuroko, he's like an enigma. But what he did tell Kuroko was that at some point, you're gonna hit this wall, and you're gonna have to overcome this wall. Bring your mountain gear, bitch! You need to climb yeah, yeah. Mm, this wall. So, how Kuroko's gonna climb this wall, and when this wall actually, like, appears, we don't know yet. But the wall's coming. Now, when it comes to Kagami, went over to America, and you know what? I love the English, cause cause the English is real funny. But the thing here is that oh, like this, like this. I'm not saying that black guys shouldn't sound this way, but this dude just it it threw me off. All right, it threw me off or whatever. All right, cause I'm not used to it. Cause I have very few uh, black friends that actually speak that way. I, I do, but still, it's like you know, it's like hey, Kagami. Yeah, man. Are you ready? I'm like, what the? <laughs> I'm like, bro. Like, it's just funny. It's really funny. Um, <laughs> it's hilarious. Like, straight up, bro, man. Like, he's straight, like, surfer. And then, granted, they're in California, but still, it just threw me the fuck off. But he's training with this master, and it's hinted that this guy is the master. He's the Okagami, man. You ready, dude? Come on. And guy was like, shut up. I'm telling you that time! Like, it's just, it's just, it's funny, man. It's the English. I love the English. But either way, Kagami, we, so we see him training. And what he's doing exactly, we don't know. Because they skip over to the actual, like, they skip the entire month. And then they go to the actual ceremony. And then Kagami didn't make the ceremony. But then when Kuroko gets summoned, he gets quote-unquote summoned. They have a meeting. Alright, I, I like some random steps. All the members of the Generation of Miracles, they're there. Plus Furihara and plus Kagami, because Kagami uh, comes in later. And Akashi Seijiro, the captain, tries to stab, he tries to literally stab 
tied to me with these scissors. And he, he cuts his hair with the scissors that Meat Reaper had. And we see that he has the, I forgot what it was called, but it's when, like, it's an actual, like, uh, it's basically when you have different color uh, pupils, pretty much. Pupils, or is it, um, well, not pupils, but, like, the outside of other people. I, again, the, ex the exact name escapes me at this point in time. But there's a certain syndrome. It's a certain, I want to say, it's, it's not a disease, it's just, like, a symptom or something. And, because uh, we've seen it before, pretty much. We've seen it before in a lot of anime where characters have, like, different color eyes, pretty much. But uh, he has that going on. And his eyes look like straight up like predator eyes, like there's like 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 there's slits his pupils, like that's the way they look. He looks ferocious, and like Furiata couldn't move. Like the air was heavy when it came to all like like when it came to the Dragon Milk members, excluding Akashi Seijiro. Then when he came in, Furiata got the stare down. He couldn't move. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> so he couldn't he, he couldn't do shit. But. The thing here is that Akashi Seijiro is massively hardcore. When we see like the training process, because we saw like all these flashes of people training, all right? We saw Amina Rima training, we saw Kisei training, we saw all the main squad, all the main team training. And when it came to Rakuzan, because that's what it was, like they're Rakuzan high. We have this one guy talking about how Akashi, like he must be really hungry for a victory. Then another dude on the bench, we 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 uh, don't see his face. He's like, no, 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 he's not hungry. He told me what he, he told me once that victory, winning, is like breathing, okay? It's like, it, it, it's natural. It is what it is, all right? You don't fight for victory. It just comes to you, all right? And then it's something along those lines, but it was mad hardcore because you're like, bro, like victory is as natural as eating and breathing. I'm like, dude, like it, it, it's... You see where the mindset is of this guy, Akashi Seijiro. Like, he's on a whole new plateau. Like, guys like Midorima, guys like Kisi, like they're hungry. Because they've lost, and they, they're hungry. But when it comes to Akashi, victory is like a basic bodily function. That's awesome. That's a really cool mindset to have. Now, granted, I'm not saying that you need to be, like, super hardcore. But that mindset that he has, I mean, you have to question how he was raised because how he was raised does impact the way he thinks. Because even amongst the members of the Generation of Miracle, he's the only one that like thinks this way so far. I mean, Murasaki Bar, he's lazy. He's like, no, no, I don't want to do this, but I hate losing anyway, so I'm going to train. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice. Almeida doesn't practice. He thinks he's the best alive, but he still wants the victory like everyone else does. But with Akashi, it's like, no, 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 no. I don't want the victory. The victory comes because it's natural. It's what's supposed to happen. I'm supposed to win. Those who win are always going to be better off than those who lose. You know, like, it, it's just that it, I like his mindset. I really do. He's mega hardcore, but I like his mindset. So where we so basically the episode does have some good character development going in that position. Then when the actual game starts and we see Toe versus Saren, the thing here is that before the game there was like a three minute scene of Kuroko with his eyes closed and shit, thinking about the past of him and Aomine and then meeting Kagami. Like his eyes are closed, like da 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 and I'm like, dude, like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was just like three minutes of that, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I was, I was expecting someone to fuck around him. Like, yo, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, 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 yo. It's the franchise, and I'm like, I where's Cena? Like, seriously, like when you need Cena the most, he's not there. It just threw me off. Because they actually could have added a lot more, you know, uh, stuff in the actual match. They could have extended the match scenes had they had shown that one little scene with Kuroko. But regardless, when the match starts, 
they're doing pretty good off the gate. Like they're very aggressive. Save it. Toe come back. Toe they score. Like they make the they make the first two points, and it's an alley oop. All right, the one guy Sakurai makes like a he he shoots a three, but actually it's an alley oop. And then Almeida is right there, like yeah, jam, jams that bitch in. And then Sarian quickly counter, or they're about to, and it ends off with Kuroko showing like it's gonna Kuroko is like, gonna do like this new pass called the Ignite Pass Kai, and that's it. So mainly the episode, when it comes to the character development, the majority of it goes towards Akashi. Because we get to see his face, we get to see like what he looks like in full now, we see his mentality, we see his ferocity, and the dude is no joke, he really is far from a joke. Furthermore, we are making a lot of story progression because they they glazed, well, the pretty much like the month of training was skipped, and we are now in the Winter Cup, and we're here, and the game is starting, so obviously there's a lot of uh, character, I mean there's a lot of story progression as well. But... When it comes to the animation, the animation was overall okay, but the pacing threw me off. Because even though there's not progression in the story, the pacing, like, that, that those three minutes with Kuroko with his eyes closed, thinking about the past, I'm like, why? You could have made more progress with the game itself and not end on the Eight Night Pass Kai. And that, to me, I thought was also kind of awkward, too. I just didn't like the way how they ended it. I'm the Ignite Pass Kai. Like, it's a real awkward cliffhanger, in my personal opinion. Ignite Pass Kai. And then we don't see it. So, but it's a new move, obviously. It's an enhanced version of the Ignite Pass. And, I mean, because you already see it in the opening. Like, you see it like 18 times in the opening, seriously. But, it's just that, like, it's a cliffhanger and it's an awkward one. I thought that it could have been, you know, better. Like, if they had like progressed even further with Sarah making some points and then they ended it on like a particular scene that's like a standoff kind of thing going on here where like Akash, we're like, um, I'm sorry, we're like Almine and Kagami like, or like basically Toe and Sarian like they have like a miniature like stare off, like they acknowledge their skill, like they end up, like they end it there, something like that. So that's my take. But the episode overall, it was a good episode, nonetheless, it was a good episode. The pacing, again, it did throw me off, and the cliffhanger ending was awkward, in my personal opinion. But everything else, animation was good, progression of story, good, character development of mainly Akashi, that, that was that, that was good, and overall, just a good episode. And uh, also, of course, seeing the coaches. Apparently, the coaches know each other. Because the father of Rico, uh, Tora, he knew the coach of Shutoku, called him Mabo. He's like, yeah! I love it. I was like, yo, I'm calling my mama. What the fuck is wrong with you? My boys are right here. And Taco was like, yo, I'm just still gonna call you mama. <laughs> He's just cracking shit. And then he knew the coach of Toho. Uh, called him like Kachan or something like that. So they know each other. The coaches. They know each other. Which is cool to see too. So in that sense, a little bit of character development here with the father of Rico. Because we never knew that until like this episode, obviously. So, I'll leave it at that. So, King Lightning, the rating, the rating overall for this week's episode of Crogan Basketball is going to be a good, and I will see you guys later. Be sure to, of course, rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace, have a nice day.